You know, I recently talked about how excited I was for Marvel's stunning and brave New Warriors comic, and how compelling it would be to follow the adventures of its body-positive, non-binary, sexually ambiguous, racially diverse heroes that were going to take back ownership of present-day internet insults, written by a man who looks like he bravely uses safety scissors to open his crisp packets. But you may be asking yourself the question, if Marvel are forging ahead with groundbreaking breaking new titles like this, what about their biggest rivals, DC? What are they doing to champion the cause of representation and diversity, and win over a fresh wave of dedicated fans to their most popular characters? Well, fear not, dear viewer, because recently we were presented with the literary tour de force that is Gotham High. Have you ever wondered what would happen if the Batman universe was transposed into a current year high school setting so that all the main protagonists were turned into vacuous, angsty, superficially attractive but intellectually empty teenagers? Ever wanted to see Bruce Wayne in the same sentence as followers and retweets? Ever wished you could take three complex, multi-layered characters with decades of history and personal conflict and force them into a cheesy, contrived, uncomfortable love triangle that feels about as natural and believable as the romance between Rey and Kylo Ren? Ever wished that Alfred Pennyworth could be an East Asian man that's happily married to his beloved husband John? Ever wanted to see Commissioner Gordon as an African American woman in charge of a high school? Ever wanted Dick Grayson to be a poor black kid getting picked on by his rich, white, privileged classmates, thus emphasising the oppressive nature of the white, heteronormative patriarchy in present day society? Well, neither had I, until I saw the trailer for this excellent new graphic novel, of course. Narrated by Selena Kyle herself, who sounds like she's on the verge of the world's most toe-curling orgasm. I'm Selena Kyle. That girl next door. That girl next door. Man, I wish I could get this excited talking about my life. Selena lays it all out so we can begin to wrap our heads around this complex web of intrigue and mystery. The gist of the story is this. Bruce Wayne is the popular, handsome, rich kid at school who's so far above everyone else that he doesn't have friends so much as followers, and we even get to see his Twitter page for emphasis, because clearly that's the sort of thing Bruce Wayne would be into. I, uh, I think I can smell shite. Not only does this cleverly articulate Bruce's social elitism, but it also provides a fascinating insight into the mind of the author. I imagine this is pretty much how you see the world if you spend 23 hours a day on social media echo chambers. Anyway, young Bruce has been kicked out of his expensive boarding school because he's a bad boy who plays by his own rules, and now he's back in Gotham High to finish out his education, because I guess there's no other boarding schools in the continental US or that the whole thing could be made to go away with a quick donation to the Dean's office. Hey, it's not like the Wayne family is made of money, you know? That's when Bruce comes into contact with Selena Kyle, who describes herself as the girl next door. That girl next door. I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, the girl next door looked less like this and more like this. <laughs> Anyway, Selena just so happens to be in a relationship with Jack Napier, the class clown who has no wealth or resources of his own, but does have brains and a wicked sense of humour. Although for some reason the artist makes him look like a teenage girl with the Ruby Rose haircut. You see how this graphic novel tackles such diverse topics as class oppression and wealth inequality in one fell swoop? Because as we all need to be reminded, rich people are all spoiled, arrogant and evil, and deserve to be taken down a peg by the smarter and more deserving proletariat. Yes, I can definitely smell shite. <laughs> then Selena explains that she loves both men and wants to play them off against each other, creating her own personal love triangle with herself positioned comfortably at the peak. Straddling it, you might say. Excellent stuff. See, it turns out it's not just Batman who delivers his own brand of justice. Now we can add female sexual liberation to the list of social issues that this graphic novel champions. That girl next door. 
Honestly, it's hard to fault the logic behind this book when you think about it. I mean, it's targeted at teenagers after all. And what do teenagers overwhelmed and burned out by high school bullying, exclusionary cliques, vacuous social media rivalries, and awkward, turbulent, unreciprocated infatuations with manipulative young women want to read about? If you'd said entertaining, thought-provoking, escapist power fantasies about dark, brooding crime fighters pitted against an ensemble of flamboyant and deadly enemies in a neo-gothic alternate vision of New York City, you'd be dead wrong, sir. What they really want is generic stories about high school bullying, exclusionary cliques, vacuous social media rivalries, and awkward, turbulent, unreciprocated infatuations with manipulative young women. Now, some people might accuse Melissa de la Cruz, the author of Gotham High, of lacking any semblance of imagination, artistic flair, or even a basic understanding understanding of the Batman universe, because by her own admission, she did almost no research into the character. They might say that all she's really done here is take a bunch of present day social issues, shove them into a tired, formulaic teen drama setting, and coat them in an extremely thin veneer of Batman mythology in a lazy attempt to profiteer off the name, and in the process, bastardizing and deconstructing iconic characters into shallow, superficial, uninteresting archetypes that nobody with more than two functioning brain cells could possibly care about. They might even say that Gotham High is the epitome of everything wrong with the comic industry today, and it's a classic example of why longtime fans are becoming increasingly alienated by publishing companies who make a point of hiring creative staff that seem to actively hate them and everything they represent. But don't you worry, those people are just angry bigots and pathetic fanboys clinging to their faded memories of the past and lashing out at anything that challenges it. Marvel's New Warriors and DC's Gotham High are going to lead the charge into a brave new future for the comic industry, starting so many important conversations it'll make your head spin. And I for one can't wait to see it all play out. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.